Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. It is Monday, October 11th. And if this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe. And of course, click the notification bell so you can get notified whenever a new video is put up, a new devotion is put up, which is every day. Our devotions are being taken from Brenda Kuhneman's book called The Daily Prophecy. And our devotion today is entitled, The Glow is Upon You. Let's hear our prophetic word. Anticipate moments after your times of prayer when those who you least expect will see my presence upon you. Never assume they won't receive your words, for I shall teach you how to draw them in, for the glow of my spirit is upon you. Oh, I received that. <laughs> Our scripture comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 29, and it says, And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of testimony in Moses' hands, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. All right. And I remember reading that. I love how it's depicted in movies. It looks really, you know, I don't think it looks that way for us, but, you know, there I've seen people that have had a glow upon them that is unique. You, you see it. <laughs> now, when Moses spent time with God, this is how Brenda expounds on this. When Moses spent time with God, the visible presence of God was seen on his face. Of course, Moses didn't realize it until he saw how people around him responded the Bible says the people were afraid to come near him. However, Moses reassured them by putting a veil on his face as he spoke with them. The Lord has placed the tangible presence of his spirit on your life. While not everyone can handle the full level of glory that you carry, you need to present it to them in a way they can receive. Moses was wise enough to know that he needed to present the glory in a way that made it a little easier for the people. Once he did that, they came near him again. He didn't apologize for the glory, nor did he explain it away. He just found a way to draw the people in so he could talk with them. As you talk with people about the gospel or minister to them in the anointing, engage them in common conversation that will draw them in and make them feel comfortable. As you do, trust from there that the anointing will do the rest to draw them in because the glow of God's presence is upon you. awesome. You know, it is important that when we are engaging with other people that we are doing at the unction of the Holy Spirit, we're supposed to engage with people because God said, go therefore and preach the gospel. He didn't mean for all of us to be preachers. He didn't mean for all of us to be evangelists or to even change our personality when we're doing this. He knows how you interact with people and he wants you when you come across people to engage them to share the gospel with them. And to do this, you must do this under the anointing. There are going to be times, there are going to be times when you are really going to feel the urge to say something. And there's going to be times when the Lord is going to put the brakes on and say, mm -mm, you're not going to feel the unction. They have to make sure that you're not going by your feelings because the enemy can stir up fear and cause us to keep our mouths shut. Okay, So it's important that you're following the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's why that personal relationship, hearing his voice and knowing when he's speaking, um, is where you're going to really need that firm foundation of that relationship so that you're not causing a misstep or doing something in your flesh. But I think that anybody who is doing something from a heart of, of obedience to the Lord to do his will, I think God will bless it. And I think God will even, even if he didn't lead you to do it, that he will lessen the negative impacts, so to speak. You know, the devil will try to take something in anyone's ears, depending on what they're doing and turn and twist it so they don't receive it. We can look at the, um, the parable of the sower, where some of it went on good soil, some went on rocky soil and some, you know, took root and then burned up quickly because, you know, representation of the cares of this life, you know, so there are things that are going to happen. We just have to be in a place of prayer and obedience for the Lord, but it's important to follow what the Lord is leading you to say or do. 
And when we do that, we can expect the anointing to appear. The glow is upon us. I don't know that I've experienced it where someone has said, wow, what, you know, but I'll, I'll receive it. I'll receive it. I don't know. I don't feel worthy to carry that, you know, to have that happen. But it's like, Lord, whenever you want that to happen, I'm willing. I'm a willing vessel. Let's pray the prayer today. Lord, I thank you that the glory is upon me. Teach me how to present it to people in a way that draws them in. And I trust that your presence will minister to them in a powerful way. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope that has encouraged you today. I hope that you feel lifted up. Um, God is good and he is faithful to trust because he doesn't lie. He says it, he will do it. So believe him for that today. Thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me today. Make sure you like and subscribe and God bless you till next time.